So we're doing a worksheet on uh, motion on inclined plane. And this is question number four of that worksheet. The question says, two particles P and Q move on a line of greatest slope on of a smooth inclined plane. Smooth means that the mu is zero, meaning that the friction is zero. There's no friction. We know friction is equals to mu r otherwise. So if the mu is not zero, then there is some friction. Okay. It says the particles start at the same instant and from the same point, each with a speed of 1.3 meters per second. Initially, P moves down the plane and Q moves up the plane. So the two particles start at the same instant. Here's P. And behind that, there's Q. And P is going downwards. And Q is going upwards. Q moves up the plane. The distance between the particle T seconds after they start to move is T. So after a while, P would be here going downwards. Q would be here going upwards. And the distance between them at any time T is represented by D. Show that D equals to 2.6 T. Okay. So D is the distance between both the particles. This would be the distance precisely. Achane, it would be this. Okay. So find this distance. All right. So let's see. Show that this distance is equals to 2.60. Okay. So this is where the particle starting from. And let's say at a particular point, Q is here. It has covered this distance. Let's call it SQ. And starting from here. Okay. And let's say P is here. And it has covered a distance of SP. So the distance between the two particles at time T, you have to show that this should be equals to 2.60. What else do we know? Inclined planes. The speed is 1.3 meters per second. Each with the speed of 1.3 meters per second. Okay. So... Now we have to find the expression for SP and the expression for SQ and add them up. And it should somehow be equals to 2.60. All right. So U is 1.3 for both the particles. So for P, and for Q, U is going to be 1.3, the initial speed. Okay. For SP, distance covered by P, let's use the formula UT plus half AT square. So it's going to be SP equals 1.3T plus half, we don't know what the acceleration is yet, times AT squared. SQ would be going upwards. If it's going upwards, that means eventually the speed will become zero and the object will start to come back. Okay, at the highest point, speed is zero. So if the point, uh, the particle Q starts to move up with a particular speed, its speed begins to decrease. And at a certain point, the speed will become zero. Meaning that Q is actually decelerating because it's going up. 
and P is accelerating because it's going down. So, acceleration would be negative. Here, A would be negative because the object is decelerating and here, A will be positive because the object is accelerating as it, as it is going down. So, the formula you will be ut plus half at square, but now A is going to be negative. So, the formula would be 1.3t minus half at square because acceleration is negative as Q is going upwards. So, now if you add these two up, SP plus SQ, which is the distance between the two particles at time t, then that's going to be 1.3t plus half at square plus 1.3t minus half at square. So the at square term gets cancelled and this is equals to 2.6t. This is what we had to show. Downwards, acceleration is positive. But if the particle is going upwards, then it's decelerating. It speeds decreases as a particle goes up the slope. So it was negative since Q is going up the slope. So speed is decreasing. That's why acceleration upward is negative. Okay, we've shown that that at any particular uh, instant t, the distance between the two particles is 2.60. When t is equals to 2.5, the difference in the vertical height of the particle is 1.6. Find the acceleration of the particles down the plane. Okay, let's clear this for part two. For part two, time is 2.5. That means we know the distance. D is 2.6 T, which is 2.5. So D comes out to be So the distance between the two particles is 2.5, sorry, 6.5. This length is 6.5. Difference in the vertical height of the particle is 1.6. So this would be 1.6. So using that, you can find the theta of the inclined plane because you have the opposite and you have the hypotenuse. So you can use sine theta and get the angle of the inclined plane. Sine theta equals 1.6 over 6.5. Theta equals sine inverse of this, which is 14.25. So theta comes out to be 14.25. Just a second. 1.6 over 0.5 sine inverse, sine inverse answer. 1.6 over 6.5. 14.25, yes. So this is going to be 14.25. Now you have to find the acceleration of the particles down the plane. So let's see. Let's look at P. For P, do we have the mass? I don't think so. So that will be considered as M. So this component of the weight is always M 
j cos theta where this is the theta which came out to be 14.25 this component downwards is can anybody tell me what's this component of the weight mg sin theta yes mg sin theta okay and since it's a smooth plane there's going to be no resistance sorry no friction the object is going downwards uh i think that's all the components there's no friction so let's find the acceleration down the plane which is going to be oh also there's an r that i've missed r is always normal to the contact which is this so there's an r in that direction okay so forward force minus backward force equals m a so forward force is just m g sin theta minus there's no backward force since there's no friction so zero equals to m a so we can cancel m a would be equals to 10 times sin 14.25 which gives 2.46 meters per second square. That's the acceleration of the particles as they move downwards. So you could have considered either P or Q when they're moving downwards. So forward force would always be mg sine theta minus backward force would always be zero. Since there's no friction equals m. So since acceleration Sorry, since the backward force is zero, you can cancel both the masses on both sides of the equation and get acceleration. Okay. Part three, the distance traveled by P when Q is at the highest point. Okay. So, let's say here is where the two balls started moving, the two particles started to move. Q is at the highest point, let's say here. U here is 1.3 and V here is going to be zero. So we know U and we know V. Uh, we should be able to find acceleration from forward minus backward is equals to MA. So, as this particle is going upwards, its forward is zero. Its backward is uh, mg sine theta. There's no friction, so no other backward force. This is R. And this is mg cos theta. Let's find acceleration upwards. It's going to be the same, by the way. Forward is 0, minus backward is mg sine theta equals to mass times acceleration. So, m and m gets cancelled minus 10 sine 14.25 equals a. So, same answer with the negative sign. You didn't even have to do all of this working. It's the same part, similar particle. So acceleration upwards is this. So you know U, you know V, you know A, which is minus 2.46. Okay, so now let's find the time it takes to reach this height. So U is known 1.3 v is known 0 a is known negative 2.46 so we should be able to find time using v is equals to u plus a b 
zero equals one point three minus two point four six t, which gives t equals zero point five two eight four double five seconds. So this is how long it takes for the particle Q from to start from its original place all the way up till it is at its highest point. And when a particle reaches its highest point on, a, on an inclined plane, then its final speed is zero. Okay, so now the actual question was find the distance traveled by P when O is at the highest point. So it takes the same amount of time for P to fall down till a particular distance. So you have to find the distance traveled by P. Distance traveled by P till Q reaches at its maximum height. So U we know is 1.3. A we know is 2.46 and time we also know from the previous part 0 0.528455. So we're going to use S is equals to UT plus half AT squared. So S equals 1.3 times 0 0.528455 plus half 2.46 0 0.5284 squared. one 1.03048. 1.03. So, P covers this much distance as Q starts from its original points and goes to its highest point. Okay, the next question. Particle slides up a line of greatest slope of a smooth plane. Again, it's smooth. That means there's no force of friction. Friction is equals to zero because mu is equals to zero. Okay, so this plane is smooth. Inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal, the particle passed through points A and B at a speed of 2.5 and 1.5 respectively. The distance AB is 4. Find the deceleration of the particles. Okay. So, you know U, 2.5. You know V, which is 1.5. You also know S, which is 4. So, we can use this to find acceleration through equations of motion. U is 2.5. V is 1.5. S is 4. And... Uh, a is question mark. What should we use here? To get A from U, V, and S. Which equation? Of v motion? square is equals to U square plus 2AS. Correct. V square equals U square plus 2AS. 
1.5 square equals 2.5 square plus 2 times A times S is 4. Minus 0 0.5 meters per second square is the acceleration. Find the value of alpha. Okay, so now let's resolve the components. So particle is going up. This is alpha. The particle is going up. There's no friction because the object is smooth. Mommy, uh, part one, won't we write 0 0.5? Oh, only yes. 0 0.5 because yes. it's asking for deceleration. Definitely, yes, we will. So A is minus 0 0.5, but D deceleration is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Yes. Okay. Part two. Now we have to find the value of alpha. So this is the particle. You know this component of the weight and you know this component of the weight. The components of weight are always in this direction in a slope setup. So this component is mg cos alpha and this one is mg sin alpha. There's no frictional force acting downwards because the it is told that the part uh, that the surface is smooth okay then there's no forward force mentioned in the question that's also zero so that's all we're ready to apply in fact no this r here normal contact force so forward force is zero minus backward force is mg sine alpha equals uh M A, so M times acceleration. So minus M times 10 times sine alpha equals M times what is the acceleration? The minus 0 0.5. Cancel M on both sides. Sine alpha equals minus 0 0.5 over 10. In fact, the negatives also get cancelled on the side, so it's positive. It comes out to be 2.865. Okay, next question. Question number six, a force whose direction is upwards parallel to the line of greatest slope of a plane inclined at 35 degree to the horizontal acts on a box of mass 15 kgs, which is at rest on the plane. Okay, so it's at rest. That means acceleration is zero. <laughs> so forward force is actually equals to backward force. The normal component of the contact force in the box has magnitude R newtons, as shown in the figure. Show that R equals 123, correct to three significant figures, which should be equals to. Okay. We have to find the value of R. We know R is opposite to mg cos theta. So equate them. So for part one, R equals mg cos theta. M is 15, G is 10 times cos 35. Okay. 
122.87, which is 123. When the force parallel to the plane acting on the box has a magnitude x newtons, the box is about to move down the plane. So in the first case, the box is about to move down the plane because this x force isn't enough to overcome the friction which is in the downward direction. Okay, then it says that Sorry, not the friction, the gravitational pull that is in the opposite direction. Okay. Then it says that, uh, and when this force has a magnitude 5x newtons, the box is about to move up the plane. Now the upward force is enough to move the box. Find the value of x and the coefficient of friction between the box and plane. So yes, there's friction as well. Okay, so here the friction, since the object is going downwards, friction should be opposite. So this would be mu r. Since it says that the object is about to move down the plane, so the movement would be downwards and friction would be backwards. And when this force has a magnitude of five times newtons, the box is about to move up the plane. So in the second case, the movement is going to be up the plane meaning that the friction is going to be down the plane. Also, let's break the weight into its component in both the parts. So this is again m g cos theta, and this is m g sine theta. Similarly, this is m g cos theta. And this is mg sine theta. So we have to find both mu, the coefficient of friction, and x. So that means we're find, forming two simultaneous equations using both the figures. And they should have x and mu as their unknown. And then we'll be solving them simultaneously. Okay, remember that the object is at rest in both the cases. So acceleration is zero. So the formula that we're going to use is forward force equals to backward force. Okay, so for the first case, forward force equals backward force. F forward equals F backwards. So downwards, the forward force is M g sine theta equals backward forces mu times r. Now we know what is r. r is opposite to this mg cos theta. So r is actually equals to mg cos theta. So r is mg cos theta. And also, in the backwards direction, there's also plus x that I've missed. Plus x. There's mu r in the opposite direction, and there's x. Okay, let's substitute the values. m is 15, g is 10, so 150. Sine 35 equals mu 150. Cos 35 plus x. This is equation one. Okay. Now, now let's form equation number two, which is going to be a forward force again is equals to backward force. Forward force now is 5x, and there are two backward forces, mu r plus mg sine theta. So 5x equals 
mu is mu, r is mg cos theta because r and cos component of the weight are opposite, are in opposite directions parallel to each other. So mg cos theta, cos 35 plus mg, in fact, mg is 15. Okay, let me just use general formula here. Plus mg sine theta. So 5x equals 150 cos 35 plus 15 into 10, 150 sine 35. That's equation number two. Solve these e equations simultaneously and tell me what do you get for x and mu. There's supposed to be a mu here. Solve these two equations simultaneously. You could use substitution or elimination, it's up to you. Perry? Yes. I hope everybody is solving these two equations to get mu and r. Sorry, mu and x. This one and this one. You can use elimination or you can use substitution. Ma'am, is x 28.7? Yes. x after rounding is 28.7. Anybody got a different answer? Should I do it on the board? Aisha, Azir, Karyo? Doubt. I'm going to do but the chief's answer is right. Okay, I'll do it. Look, mu 150 cos theta is the same, so first I'm going to eliminate that. So, if you're let's say, substitution, then 150 sine 35 minus x equals mu 150 cos 35 आ गया and this one becomes this was equation two uh bring 5x to this 5x is already here minus 150 sine 35 nice sorry minus yeah it is 150 sign 35 thoughts just a second so 5x minus 150 
साइन थर्टी फाइव इक्वल्स म्यू वन फिफ्टी कॉस थर्टी फाइव नाउ यू कैन यूज सब्सटीट्यूशन सो इक्वेट दिस विद दिस सो फाइव एक्स माइनस वन फिफ्टी साइन थर्टी फाइव इक्वल्स वन फिफ्टी साइन थर्टी फाइव माइनस एक्स सो यू गेट सिक्स एक्स इक्वल्स थ्री हंड्रेड साइन थर्टी फाइव एंड देन एक्स इक्वल्स थ्री हंड्रेड साइन थर्टी फाइव ओवर सिक्स दिस शुड गिव यू द आंसर फॉर एक्स द मोर देन वन वेज ऑफ डूइंग दिस ऑफ कोर्स twenty eight point six seven eight eight which rounds to twenty eight point seven ठीक है दाउ जी मैम अब म्यू फाइंड कर लो anybody has found म्यू zero point four seven four six seven में अच्छा मेरे पास आ रहे हैं थ्री सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स म्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट फोर सिक्स सेवन वेन यू पुट एक्स बैक यू शुड आइडियली बी यूजिंग इट्स लॉन्गर answer this one anybody is unable to get this mu main isko kara deti you just need to take this to the other side divide this and substitute the previous x answer here 